Fint. Mm. Fint. You mean fine, Shirley, because this is an international broadcast. Really? I'm sorry, my, my, name, my name is not Shirley, but, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is uh, for the first time you're ever hearing our voices. This is Great Beards of Westeros. Yeah, Every, guys. You know. It's good to be on, uh, on the show, finally. After so many months of planning, uh, we've finally decided to uh, crawl out of our basements, start the recording for real, and uh, take this um, gentle topic um, and uh, distribute it to the rest of the world. It's anything but gentle, though, right? Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. I feel gentleness is maybe one word that we really can't use to describe this this show. It's Gentle really... is not in your vocabulary? No. Okay. Soft? Soft? Yeah. Could do. Could do. Not gentle. Not gentle. So, for those of you very unfamiliar with uh, the voices you're hearing, uh, my name is uh, Jakob Hultman, and uh, I have a beard. Yeah, my name is uh, Samuel Linde. Uh, I also have a beard. My name is Andreas Buzz, of course, Aldrin. And these two guys, they inspired me to get a beard. And so now I have one. Oh, that's awesome. So That's, um, that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like the best saying. compliment I've ever heard. Yeah. So uh, we know that there's, uh, there's an arsenal of, uh, of many podcasts about um, the only game that matters, Game of Thrones, the living card game uh, by Fantasy Flight Games. And uh, for a very long time, we have, uh, we've had uh, thoughts about, um, yeah, bringing this topic up in, uh, in our own segment of, of podcasts. And that is, um, that is the great beards of Westeros. And I think uh, uh, it was... Um, it was a message on Facebook in, in the uh, AGOT second edition group this week that finally triggered <laughs> the forced reaction that eventually led to uh, this uh, recording of, of the first episode. Wasn't that so? It was yeah. someone complaining that he didn't have enough episodes for his daily commute. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, we, have to, uh, we have to give a shout out. I have to find that. Uh, that message so 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 it can be a proper shout out and be in the show notes yeah i mean major kudos to that guy uh, i i didn't think it was possible with a with the avalanche of podcast episodes that keeps coming out every week to be you know be in that position where hey guys there's not enough podcasts <laughs> <laughs> but uh apparently uh someone <laughs> has had a much amount of time to be able to listen to even more podcasts than, than there actually are out today. Yeah. And, but, and, um, and, yeah. and obviously we felt the call to do something about that because uh, maybe we're not the podcast that you want, but we're definitely the podcast that you need. Oh, definitely. The podcast that you deserve? Yes. Yes, it's, hopefully. It was, um, so, so the proper shout out goes to Lance Kreutzinger, who, uh, who said on Facebook, I don't have any more podcasts to listen to. So my commute can be between one hour and three hours in one direction, and I listen to Agot podcast to pass the time. So far, I listen to Beyond the Wall, The White Book, Brotherhood Without Manners, Taming Dragons, Wardens of the Midwest, Insight and Renown, Calling the Banners, Throne Runner, Banter Behind the Throne. If anyone knows of any more, it would be nice. We're here so to first save all, you. We're, we're here to save you. Second of all, there are a couple of uh, podcasts that I wasn't even aware <laughs> that they <laughs> were out there. Sorry about that, but yeah. So eventually that led to one thing after another. Justin Sengstock, another shout out, uh, said that um, he uh, thought there was a niche of, uh, of beards of Westeros that was cur currently underserved. So um, here you go, Justin and Lance, another podcast. It's, you, uh, you asked for beards. You're getting beards. <laughs> you're getting beards. And um, for those of you, um, we are looking for uh, uh, a podcast that uh, reviews cards uh, based on their strength, power level, <laughs> uh, meta-defining cards. Well, 
They could be. Um, look the other way. This is going to be a podcast about um, uh, cards looking from another perspective. Uh, we hope to bring uh, uh, some new topics up. And we know that there are a lot of you guys out there who are frustrated about uh, the lack of speaking and discussion about uh, beards. So um, this is this is mainly going to be about beards. Hopefully we'll get a lot of guests on. Um, hopefully a lot of them will have beards. Otherwise, they're not welcome. Um, they are probably <laughs> welcome anyway. Okay. We'll have to do something about that. Yeah, there are fake beards. There are fake mm. beards out there. We, and we, there's no shame. Of using shame beards. I mean, we don't endorse <laughs> fake beards, but if you're physically incapable of growing a beard, and I mean, like, there could be gender issues, but uh, I mean, that's the only excuse I can think of <laughs> for <laughs> not growing a beard, basically. Oh, have you, uh, you guys, do you, do you guys remember uh, Mr. Friendly from Lost, the TV yeah. series? Yeah. He no. had a fake beard. Oh, he had a great fake beard. He pulled it off really well. Well, thanks, Jacob, for introducing something that wasn't planned in the show notes. Now we're going to have to link to to uh, Mr. Friendly's fake beard. I'm very sorry. But uh, should we uh, should we kick this off? Yep. Should we start? Yep. Good idea. Good. So, um, I would say uh, that, was a, that was a good introduction. But uh, one thing we missed out was, is uh, actually that uh, we have a guest on today. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Andreas. Mm. Uh, we'll really? see how much of a guest you are. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> If I pass the test. I think uh, by the end of this episode, you could be part of the inventory. We'll see. If you're back next week, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll know for sure. <laughs> we'll know for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Andreas, uh, everyone knows everything about me and Samuel. Can you tell us something about yourself? Something. Hmm. Oh, tell us everything. Everything. Okay. Come everything. on. Tell okay. us everything. So... I was born in 1989. It was a grim year. Uh, the, well, it was a year of happiness, you know. The Berlin Wall had just fell. And that's all you need to know about me, I think. I'm just going to do a uh, quick uh, Google of beard 1989 <laughs> and see what we... All right. See what you come no. up with. But uh, I'm, um, I'm the guy that organizes most of the um, tournaments in Stockholm. Uh, I uh, suck at melee, at least in big tournaments. I can't win them. And uh, it plays pretty well in Joust instead, usually. Yeah, you're, uh, you're pretty good at this new, um, this new rendition of the game, right? I'm not too happy with how it's evolving right now, but yeah, it's... I think I've got a hang of it. Yeah. You've um, hashtag humble brag, hashtag humble brag. <laughs> You've encountered uh, some people in in uh, in some finals in second edition, and you've uh, intimidated them with your beard, and you've yes. won yes. twice in yeah. one weekend. All you need is a beard. That's good. I wanna I wanna know if anyone else has managed to win two champion store championships in one weekend. It's pretty unique. I haven't I've heard of several people winning. Back-to-back -back tournaments, but uh, not during the same weekend, I think. Mm. We'll if I see. would just pull one name out of the hat, mm? I guess it would be Alvaro. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, it could me. be. Yeah. It I mean, I, I, I know it wasn't all in one weekend, but, you know, if I just... just he has, he has a three, just say one name. Yeah. I think he has he has one some. Yeah. And he has a beard. Yes. Uh, he has a great beard. So, um... That's a bit about uh, Andreas. Samuel, do you want to do you want to tell me something about yourself? About myself? Yeah. Uh, well, what is there to say except I mean my I guess my claim to fame is uh, that I was the one who sort of introduced you to the game. So that, that makes me sort of like co-world's champ something. You kind of created the LCG meta in Sweden, right? I think so, yeah. You're the uh, one who sort who of created the game? <laughs> <laughs> Way back when. Yeah, you know I'm the I'm like the fifth beetle. <laughs> <laughs> you oh you're the janitor of Fancy Flight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You were the ones uh, sneaking around in the playtesting in the background. 
You were you were just mopping the floors, and then you know when Damon Stone was testing out uh, Red Queen's Faithful, you were the one who was saying, "That's a great card. That's a that's an excellent card. I play that all the time at home with my wife." <laughs> Obviously, oh Harrenhal, you should make that neutral. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh um, gosh! You're a store owner as well, right? I'm a store owner, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> basically, I became a store owner sort of the back. Uh, <laughs> it was like a backwards way uh, of uh, trying to basically uh, create some kind of outlet for um, the gaming community in uh, in Varberg. So uh, I started playing the game before I started the store, but now the store sort of functions as, as a sort of... Um, um, yeah, sort of the, the, the center of the Varberg meta. We have our gaming nights there. We have a tournaments there. We even had the last edition of the Varberg Mogulis there because our fabulous fortress uh, was being renovated uh, so it could withstand the attacks from the bearded Danes a bit better. Uh, well, there's not much of attacks anymore going on around the fortress, but it's a, gate, a great place to play card games. Mm. So hopefully we'll be back there one year. It's an excellent place. It's an excellent place, yeah. Yeah. So that's me. And Jacob, uh, basically, you're just the throwing guy here, I think. Yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm the sidekick. All right. So let's move on. Great. <laughs> well, let's, m there might be someone who doesn't listen to all of the podcasts, who doesn't know who you are. Please tell us something. I am, Have you done um, anything? I have. I was introduced to this game by you. Yeah, <clears throat> it was a great time. I loved playing with the core set. It was a great, it was a great core set. It's probably one of the best games I've ever played. And we're talking first edition here. Yeah, we're talking yeah. first edition, and um, and then uh, and then there came some expansions. It was good. I played the game, and then we. Uh, we I uh, we had a we had a regional 2013 in Sweden the first regional in the LCG first edition and I managed to win that and uh, that was fun and that's that was a good time. Then you've won more or less every tournament since, right? Uh, not really, no. but uh, I've I've won um, I've I I won a, I won a tournament in um, in the UK in 2014. And uh, that uh, uh, inspired um, Dark Nudge from Beyond the Wall to call me Giant Underwear, which some people might recognize from the interwebs. And uh, after that, I managed to win the melee in Stalic with a deck that was painful. For and that, then, other uh, yeah. yeah, it was it was great time. I had a great time. Um, I just hope that they reprint Rhaegar Targaryen sometime. Sometimes I cry at night <laughs> thinking about that man. Uh, and then uh, I won Worlds in Joust, the last 1.0 tournament in, in Worlds last year. So It's okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. But you didn't win two tournaments in a weekend, so... No, no. no. I have never won anything in 2.0. So we have a new champ in town. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's and, call him, uh, just let's call him the people's champ. Just for let's case. call him the people's champ just for sakes. And uh, just for your information, we're all the three of us are from Sweden. So uh, if you uh, if you couldn't tell by the great beards, we are we are from Sweden, and uh, it's probably the best meta in the world. People say so. I don't know if people it's true, so. but people. They tell me so. Yeah, people want to say that. It's okay. And um, we uh, represent, as Samuel said, the Varberg meta and the Stockholm meta. We have some people scattered all over the place, but those are the two biggest metas in Sweden. And uh, I would say that brings us over to the next topic, doesn't it? Really? And what's that? Or maybe the topic. A topic. Uh, the next segment in uh, in our um, podcast uh, episode this week is called Topic of the Week. Mm. And um, I thought that uh, this week uh, we were going to talk a little bit about the secret behind the Swedish meta. I know a lot of people try to find the secret recipe for um, looking good, for smelling good, uh, performing well 
in both tournaments and off tournaments. Um, but most of all, um, how do we become so good at what whatever we do? And how do you assemble an IKEA furniture also? Well, there, there's a simple short answer for that. And, and there's probably a really long, long winded explanation that doesn't really fit the podcast format. But I feel like the starting point is probably uh, having hair growing in your face. It feels yeah. like a good, good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've experienced ever since uh, you and me, Buzz, we went to Worlds last year. We've mm -hmm. experienced people trying to get into the Swedish meta. Yeah. Um, we know that we have two people who uh, we have um, uh, kindly accepted into our uh, extended branch of the Swedish meta, the yeah. the Wisconsin branch. Yeah. Uh, Kid Seafield and Sam Bratz. Uh, they both have beards. Yes. Um, and uh, they are the Swedish meta in America. And um, uh, I don't know if they can tell us a little bit more about the secret, but um, I don't know if there is much secret, is it? No, uh, I mean, obviously, we, we've sort of spoiled the secret. By, oh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. the secret behind the secret. Oh, you mean, uh, yeah. How do, I, you I, get, how do you get hair in your face well, without that's what... it looking silly? That's what we're going to spend the next few years on this podcast, trying to really get to the bottom. Oh, sorry. It's like uh, when you're trying to explain the Lord of the Rings trilogy by saying, why didn't they just take the eagles? Yeah, sort of. Oh, it's, sorry. It's, uh, it's a it's long a road. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. And, and I think uh, there's sort of a... I don't want to get all too philosophical here, but uh, there's the thing of... Uh, you know, the, the pain that you can experience while growing your beard, mm -hmm. uh, the pain that comes from, I mean, it's a pain on several levels. You have the itch, which you can remedy with a couple of products that we're going to talk about. Um, but there is the pain of people around you who will criticize your efforts of growing your beard. I can imagine a lot of our listeners, a lot of our listeners who, who gave up growing a beard did so because they didn't get the approval of the people close to them. Oh yeah, we have a few. We have a few friends here in the Stockholm meta. <clears throat> we're not going to name any names, but uh, we have a few people who um, we're still hoping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's uh, it's taking a long time. The significant yeah. others are standing in their way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and I feel you know it's it's a, it's a struggle, and you come to a certain point where the beard becomes such a part of yourself that even the people close around you will, you know, I, I probably wouldn't get away with suggesting to shave my beard at this point. Now it's such, such an ingrained part of myself or my personality. Would I, it am, even be I am my beard. I mean, would it even be possible for you to shave it off physically? Probably not. No. You had to hire someone to do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They would, they would probably rip half your face off as well. Yeah. And uh, actually my, my barber, probably wouldn't allow me <laughs> to shave it. No. Oh. Um, and and I, I feel that, it, you know, we're going to talk a lot about, uh, uh, not in this episode, but in upcoming episodes, how to find a good barber, good science of a good barber. I think we need to follow up on that. Yeah. I hope someone of us takes notes so we, <laughs> so we can follow up on these excellent I'm sure we'll have ideas. listeners who will remind us anyway. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> well, so, so, so def it's definitely part of it. I yeah. mean, a beard. Uh, and uh, success in card games. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. It goes hand in hand, definitely. And, and I mean just, you know, uh, probably the way Andreas used his beard as an intimidating factor. Mm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, people who, you know, if you have a really long beard, you could probably sneak in like a varus in your beard before the tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, you know, with, with the sleight of hand, put it out, oh, oh, there's a virus in my hand, marshal him, uh, sort of turn a game around. Uh, that's not the way, uh, that's, that's not how, you're, how, the, how the beard will help you win championships. No, and I, I think as if, you're, if you're using the right products as well, which we'll, we will come to, um, I don't think it will be, even be physically possible to hide anything, because if you have a good beard oil, mm -hmm. you, will, you, you don't want to get your cards all sticky and, and oily. 
That's not <laughs> the way to play the game. I mean, <laughs> why is why is your very so greasy? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Where did where did you get that from? The toilet store. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, beard is a uh, beard is a good factor for uh, <clears throat> for building a good meta. And uh, I think Sam, you you made a good example because you started the Swedish meta pretty much. Mm. Uh, you're the founder. <clears throat> you also have the greatest beard in uh, in all of of Sweden, probably uh, as, at least in the Agot meta. Um, <laughs> Thanks for, narrow, for <laughs> narrowing it a little bit. <laughs> I, I felt like I started big and it was too big. Yeah, yeah. And He's... then I narrowed it down to a little bit too far. So I want to find something in the middle there. Maybe. Um, uh, you, maybe you got the best uh, beard of a board game store owner. <laughs> <laughs> he seems so proud there for a minute, and then, yeah, oh, his heart sank. <laughs> yeah. You're getting there. Yeah, You're getting You're there. Right. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, we we come back to this all the time. But beard is a beard is a very good uh, starting point for a good for a good meta, and this is that that was the, the starting point for the Swedish meta. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean. Just to play the devil's advocate a bit here, how, how, um, if 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 one would be Andreas, wouldn't it be too intimidating for for new players to play against Andreas, for example, with a beard and everything? Can it destroy a meta as well? The beard. Mm, that's what oh, you scare mean people away. Mm -hmm. Can you scare people away? Mm. Well, there's a, there's always two sides of that coin. I mean, that's it's a it's a, it's a thing with competitive metas. I think it's gonna um, it might uh, you know get the casual players a bit scared, I guess, intimidated. Uh, but it will help everyone to get better. I think it inspires people. So yes, it yeah. does. It does. So I think he's, yeah. So I think there's a, a big similarity there between uh, a great beard and a great player. It will inspire people. But it will scare yeah, I mean, some uh, people as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, put away any any players. But for example, if you look at Worlds last year and and Andreas Melee final, uh, mm. the last table, it was pretty. It was a pretty tough game. It was intimidating. Uh, Andreas was playing a great deck, and he was, uh, as we all know, he's the people's champ, and he would have won if things would have played out right and and, and correct in our eyes, and. Um, but uh, what we can, one thing we can learn from that is that uh, the the player who uh, who came out last and played worst in that final uh, was the guy without a beard, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And the guy. So, uh, yeah, that's a good. That's good. Yeah, the the the, the, <laughs> the guy I hate. So and and know. the guy who um, finished uh, second in everything that he played, pretty much. Mm. So, um, get a beard, everyone. Yeah. And um, that's, the, that's the tip of the week as well for, for building your meta. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll find uh, other beardly tips for building your meta in further episodes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, um, that brings us to the next topic of the... Of, um, <clears throat> of our weekly program, which is uh, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, it's called Beard of the Week. Yeah. Who do and, we have uh, today? Yeah, I think our, uh, our, uh, the guy who is currently um, our guest, who may or not may be, <laughs> may or may not be a staple of the show, <laughs> but who is currently a guest, uh, has the honor of introducing this, uh, this uh, card. Okay. So my favorite beard in second edition so far is of course Eddard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, disagreeing. I, it's it's yeah, a great it's, choice. Great choice. It's hard to disagree. Yeah. It's, um, tell tell us a bit more of, of of your choice. So, a big hero of mine, uh, Samuel Linde, his uh, his beard looks like this, and it's you know it's the dream beard. It's thick. It's it got a nice mustache that you can twirl around a little bit, and you know it shines. And it's not all full black; it's a little bit of gray, giving that um, nice salt and pepper look. Yeah. Would you say distinguished? Distinct, yeah, distinguished. Yeah, honorable. Yeah, this is why I love 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 his beard. Yeah, 
it's it's a great beard, and obviously this is an artistic impression of Eddard, but I I, I picture him like this, and I, I we talked a little bit in the in the in our pre-show discussion that he probably uses his longsword nice. in his beard uh, grooming uh, process. Yeah, you can see it in the background. It's uh, I mean. Uh... Obviously, uh, by the time of this episode, when it airs, we only have one Eddard Stark uh, um, printed, and it's from the core set, obviously, for for future reference. Uh, and in that artwork, we have um, the long sword hanging in the background. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm actually reminded by uh, um, about a, a character who I uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I hope the TV show hasn't destroyed my uh, my. The description of him, but uh, Tyrion Lannister, mm -hmm. he says, I think he says something to, I think it's to Jon Snow, that uh, he uh, books are for him like a whetstone to a to a sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It keeps his mind sharp, and I think uh, you could say something similar about the beard. Having a great beard is like, it's essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Helps Definitely. you keep, keep a yeah. good posture. Yeah. Uh, you can look out into the distance and people will look to you and wonder what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, to me, Eddard could strike any pose in that art. I mean, he could look the other way. He, mm. can, he can stare even further in the distance. He could read a book. He could yeah, probably I mean, be uh, naked and just um, looking yep. at his sword or something. I don't know. I was and, just, just going to say, he maybe he doesn't wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and and for, we don't, it's not important to us. I mean, he doesn't wear anything that covers his face. That's what's mm. important yeah. in this uh, artwork. Mm. And uh, as you said, Samuel, it's probably, uh, he's probably using ice as a sharpener mm. and um, trimming the lines along his beard yeah he it's has a, a great great beard line along his cheek by the way yeah mm. uh, it, it's, it's, it's very the, soothing yeah the, the artist made a uh, a really good research probably before drawing yeah. this one big props to uh is his name uh jacob murray or james murray i can't see let's call him mr murray because obviously he is he's well worthy of our uh Everyone will know yep. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray, yeah. It's uh, it's Jacob Murray. Yeah. Um, I just did. And you make a great point about, you know, having a beard uh, sort of enables you to, to um, you get away with a lot of things. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things is if you have a good beard, you don't need anything to cover your face. That is true. Yeah. I mean, you, you could draw Eddard with a brown paper bag, Bobby said, but he's got such a great beard that he doesn't need to. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that is correct. That All is right. correct. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, pretty much covers up our segment of Beard of the Week. It's Eddard Stark. It's a corset card. He's um, he's good. Yes. His good. artwork is very good. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy it. it good uh, pick. It. I really, I really like that the artist really focused on the beard as well. In this, you can see the focus on the on the artwork is definitely in in that area of his face. Yeah. Like like you said, ice is in the background. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's, it's, but it's beard it's, is in the foreground. Yeah, I mean ice is there. It's good. It it makes for a subtle point of um he, ice is important to him for various reasons. But by pointing out the beard, you can kind of see where the artist wants to go with with the importance of ice in this picture. <laughs> so yeah. Do you guys want to add anything else to the beard of the week topic? Mm. Per perfect summary. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this segment. This is absolutely my favorite uh, topic so far. Yeah. One of the best so far. Yeah. I'd say top three. Top, <laughs> yeah, really top three. <laughs> okay. So that leaves us for uh, our next uh, segment, uh, which is also a great one. Uh, we um, decided to call it honorable mention. For several reasons, uh, one, it covers a lot of good stuff. Second, um, it uh, it uh, makes us um, it it makes it possible for us to wander back into the first edition, which we loved so much with so much bad artwork and so many good 
Oops. <laughs> so um, if you guys didn't uh, hadn't figured it out already, uh, this topic is uh, is is basically us choosing something that we liked from the past or something that is slightly doesn't function as a beard of the week, but is still an honorable mention. Mm. So this week, uh, Samuel, you've uh, spotted um, a very a very good thing about the first edition, and it has some great depth to it. Yes, it does. Uh, today we're actually going to uh, look at the progress of a character. Um, one who uh, we're still waiting for his first card in the second edition. Mm -hmm. um, I, sure, I sure hope we'll get one of this... Uh, this pretty immobile man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was very, I was, I was nearly shocked that you were going to say immobile beardly man, but it, but it's good that you're not focusing on the beard yet. N not yet, because I feel that I, I'm saving the best part uh, for the last. I, I, I think mm -hmm. um, he was represented in two cards in first edition. It's Hoster Tully, uh, Catelyn's uh, old man, and. Um, in the first, it, uh, the first card that came out was from the from the um, Wolves of the North Stark uh, big box expansion, yep. where he is um, he's not looking good. I mean, he's obviously bedridden. He he's sick. Uh, he's close to death in both the cards, but in the first one, he's looking miserable, mm -hmm. and you can see it in his beard as well. Uh, it doesn't have any shine. Mm -hmm. It's tangled. Mm. Uh, tangled in the beards, uh, but in the second card, you see him. He's he might be even closer to death. He might be even be dead in that picture. The second but, one is from ancestral home. Yes. yes. So that was the not the last cycle, right? Was it the last cycle of the the second to last? Right. Second to remember. last, right? Second, second to last, last yes. yeah, because correct. that's the claw, of the last one. It's in the price cycle, yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm. So in this card, his beard looks amazing, mm. like great. His hair looks great. Mm. Uh, it's a bit longish, you know, combed back. Yeah. Uh, and, and the beard just complements the hair in such a great way. Uh, and he is, uh, he's looking uh, rather pleased with his life. Yeah, I think so. In that art. Yeah. You think he has hired a maester to prepare him for his last journey or something? Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. He's just looking out in the, into the distance, longing, mm. wondering where where Rob and Caitlin are, and mm. yeah, yeah. There are a lot of uh, of small details when you compare these uh, these uh, two different versions of the character that kind of stands out. In the second one, the the beautiful one that we'd like to call it, uh, he is noble as well. Mm. Oh, he is. Yeah, he is. And, he and he is he is not noble in in the first one. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, you kind of take that as a sort of I, I interpret that as sort of a progression for him that he actually becomes more noble as he comes closer to death. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the better his beard looks, he yeah. becomes more respected as well. Probably, yeah, probably. So that's that's one part. I mean, if we're obviously handing out life lessons left and right uh, on this podcast. Mm. So if you want to earn more respect in life, uh, taking good care of your beard is going to take you a long way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to drift away here. But there is a, there are a couple of things with the first card that is kind of disturbing to me. <laughs> first of all, um, you already said it. His beard and and hair looks like a very very old man's. Um, beard, and uh, and the second thing is that the man who is probably standing on his knees by the side of the bed, he is eating his arm. <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't <laughs> noticed this before. <laughs> but this is a this is clearly a very disturbing uh, progression. I I'm trying to think if if that man is. I mean, you can try to try to imagine how that man has probably has tried to look after Hoster Tali all of his life, and now he sees him in his deathbed, and he's thinking, "My gosh, look at his beard!" <laughs> uh, 
and he's trying his best, but Hoster is just, no, no, kid, I'm dying. And this man, he's so angry with himself because he didn't take care of Hoster's beard mm. by the end of his days. And now he's just, he can't control himself, so he starts eating his arm. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, the first thing that must come to his mind is, if I had taken better care of his beard, would he be... I mean, would he would he be well now? Would he be alive? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the second art, they probably kicked out that guy and <laughs> replaced him with a good maester or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and get get us a, get us one of those guys who has the beard link in his uh, chain. <laughs> <laughs> the beard link. Yeah, we have this guy. He doesn't have the Valyrian steel link yet. Oh, it doesn't matter. Does he have a beard link? <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, we need him. Great. Send him stats. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's a good honorable mention. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I really enjoy Hoster Tully. He deserves a good beard. Yeah, he deserved a good ending. And uh, I like to think that this, this was the way he ended. Mm. He was a, a noble to the end. Yeah, with a great beard. With a great, great beard. old white beard. Yeah, that's yeah. How, that's how I want to go. Yeah. Andreas, you want to add something? Or do you want to jump to the next segment? I, I'm really interested in the next guy. The next few guys. Yeah, the next yeah. few guys. Oh, this is so good. So, we, the next segment is actually going to be... Um, we'll see if we manage to do it every week. But um, it's a special segment that we'd like to call This Just In. And it's actually um, whenever we see a new card... Uh, with some interesting um, artwork and specifically some uh, interesting beards, we'd like to uh, bring that up and um, get it to the to the podcast. And uh, this first episode, we uh, have actually found uh, a spoiler um, for which which is not new to the people, but the artwork might be uh, uh, somehow overlooked. I think. I don't think people appreciate some of the art. They just look at the ability. They look, mm. oh, it's it's a lethal counterattack coming back. Oh, now I spoiled it, the card. Oops. Yeah, it could probably oh, yeah. be like a. It could probably be like a. <laughs> I don't know, like a family photo to some people. Mm. Uh, people don't really care about the artwork, but uh, guys, uh, there is so much depth in this game. Not yeah. only uh, uh, game mechanic wise, uh, the artwork mm -hmm. tells uh, tells us a story. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it it reminds me of something that was up for discussion this this that last week actually on the um, on the second edition uh, group on Facebook, where someone was uh, there was a discussion about referring to plot cards by their stats, mm. Mm. and there was a bit of an argument. I was, some people refer to them by their stats and some by their titles. I think actually, you know, um, sort of comparing plot cards by the quality of the beards in the picture. Mm. That's yeah. one way. I mean, I remember like. Well, like a Clash of Kings. Well, you can't see the beards because they have helmets. That's how I remember that card. You don't, yeah, you don't you... play it. No, no. Well, that's that's very interesting because I um I try to um I try to imagine how they look underneath the helmets, and mm. I try to imagine who has the better the best beard of the two. And um, sometimes I do it too much and I drift away. But it's uh anyway. Th that's how I look at the that plot. It's a good plot. Yeah, it's a good one. But anyway, now we're drifting away here. Yeah, um, sorry. The the um, this just in of the week is the wa the Watcher on the Walls, which is a new uh, Night's Watch event. Costs one. It's uh, it's loyal, but we don't care about that. The artwork though, is pretty great, isn't it? Yeah. We got two guys. Uh, they've uh, they've got quite uh, quite strong uh, strong beards. They're um they're so strong and so big that you can't even really see the end of it. It, it looks, looks like, like if yeah, you can't really tell if it's the fur on their on their clothes or if it's just yeah. the beard continuing and continuing all the way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can imagine if you were a watcher on the wall, you're probably you've been standing there for a while, so it could be a, it could be a very long beard. Yeah. It's a little bit like how you look today. Jacob, actually, <laughs> where, oh, you, you think you don't you don't see where the beard ends and where the clothes begin. 
Oh, it doesn't. I don't wear and any clothes. I, d- I don't find I don't find it hard to believe that these guys, these watchers, they actually have they wear clothes that are weaved out of their own beard. You know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Woven in place, sort of. Yeah, that is uh, that is true, actually. And and yeah, it's it's a great card, great artwork. And there's even a guy in the back who is sort of like I think he has the back turned. Mm-hmm. Um, towards the artist, yeah. yeah, might be because he's a bit ashamed because his yeah. beard is not growing the way he he wants. So, you know, these guys look obviously super proud, yeah, of their impressive beards. Oh yeah, and the other guy, maybe maybe he shaved this morning, the <laughs> third guy, <laughs> and now he's ashamed and he can't join the gang, so. These two are the go the the actual watchers on the wall, and the third guy he's just he's just a third wheel. Yeah, and um, I I just noticed that the guy on the left is pointing. I think maybe he's pointing down to Castle Black to the courtyard, and he's having a bit of a laugh. Like probably. Hey, look at that guy! Look at that guy's beard. What is he? Probably, <laughs> probably pointing probably pointing at Jon Snow or something. Look at that guy. He's got he a beard. Have a beard. <laughs> He's got a beard? No, he doesn't have a beard. Yeah. What are you saying? You see Lord Commander? <laughs> having no a beard. <laughs> you having a laugh? <laughs> see having a laugh? Yeah. Can only imagine these watchers on the walls. Probably one of the longest beards in the in the Seven Kingdoms. Yep. Probably, <clears throat> and just to to just comment on the <clears throat> the actual effect of the card, mm-hmm. probably going to be a good good card, great event for these defensive Night's Watch decks. Sorry, I, I was drifting. I was uh, totally <laughs> off topic now. But I, I don't really understand what you're talking about now. But yeah, yeah, I really like the artwork of the yeah. card. It's it's good. Um, anyway. Do we like this card? Like, or do we? I mean, I'm I'm kind of. It, it's like I like the card, I like the artwork, I like the beards, but then uh, um, also pushing away the third guy. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure about that. They're not so. being very nice, and no, they have kind of unkept beard. They, yeah. It's long and cool and stuff, but they it looks like they don't have any beard all over at the wall or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I um, I think they uh, they probably need to listen to this episode and mm. and. Uh, Here's some of our, um, our, uh, our our tips about how to how to take care of your beard. Yeah, it it sort of takes us into the next segment of the show. I think it does. Yeah, next next segment um, we're calling tonic of the week. Yeah, no, and um, not to be mistaken by the earlier topic of the week. No, no, <laughs> uh, this exactly. This is going to be tonic of the week. This is uh, this is where we. Um, how should I um how should I uh, call this um we um we describe and place our setup mm. we um we tell us about our our favorite products and we yeah. uh we bring you the inside of the Swedish meta so uh, yeah. you've been trying a new beard oil I've heard yeah oh no I haven't you haven't. Oh yeah, I have, but that we're saving for next week. Oh, yeah, right. Samuel right. is the one who has the oh really the tonic of the week this week. Yeah, I'm bringing out my favorite. This is my favorite product. This is the one I would not leave home without. Um, it's a great product. It's um, I'm holding holding it up to the camera here. Uh, it's all oily, like the flask itself is is greasy by now. So and for those of you listening on the audio only podcasts. Samuel is showing a very nice flask of oil. And where can yeah. they find a picture of that? Jacob, uh, Samuel. In the show notes. In the show notes. Okay. Head to the show notes. Great. And you'll find yeah. a yeah. link to the store. So don't hold us, hold us off any longer. Tell us, Samuel, what is this? This is made in New York City. Uh, it's called JS Sloane Beard Oil. It's one of those products. Do you know sometimes you buy a product for your beard or maybe for your hair and it has instructions for how much you should use Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it feels like it's never enough. You know, Mm -hmm. it says maybe you buy this really nice, luxurious Dutch pomade or something for your hair and it says use 
use like take 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 a sample of the product the size of a pea or something. Uh, you know, just small small amounts, mm -hmm. and you know, just rub it in your hands, warm it up, and then use it, and then you feel that's not enough. I need a lot more. This product it says take three or four drops of oil, and you're like, nah, that's not going to be enough. So I take like seven or eight drops, and my hands are just greasy. It's it's insane. It's you know, I could probably use this product for two more years. It's crazy. You you use two or three drops, mm -hmm. and it's enough for. I mean, my beard is kind of longish. It's it's a lot of beard, and it's enough. And it gets you know it's so good. You get a smooth, luxurious beard. It's 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 nice. It's comfy. You go you know, and and for those of you who use a beard, all you know you you kind of start this habit of going of stroking your beard all day, and by the yeah. end of the day, yeah. there's nothing left. Yeah, you ju just your greasy hands, <laughs> and, and and then you get beard oil all over the place. Yeah, all over your keyboard, all over your family, over your cards, <laughs> over your, <laughs> your cards. Yeah, I mean, I hate it when I joust, and then I like my my play mat is all brown mm. because I've I've stroken my play mat up against my beard <laughs> for the whole match. But you know what's pretty good for Tell shuffling? Mm -hmm. It's the uh, makes it easier yes oh, sli yeah. good Slips. yeah it's great that's great yeah yeah i've stopped using sleeves actually uh, <laughs> i'm just uh, i'm just using beard oil mm. just shuffling it's so easy grease your cards enough it yeah and then it shuffles themselves yeah 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 it does and then um when i play uh, tears of list and put to the sword i just put my card on top of the opponent's card and they um it's pretty intimidating <laughs> you get it yeah, I can't. Anyway, imagine. so this, JS Sloan uh, beard oil, it's the best one I've used so far. And so I've, five tried, I've, I've tried beard oils. I've tried beard, oil, beard yeah. oils. I promise. Does it have Does a it, smell, the one you have? Well, it's scent? a very subtle scent. Uh, it's, it's a slight hint of uh, maybe um, a little bit lemony and a little bit of mm. uh, maybe some kind of um, um, a bit of a wooden scent. Mm. Nice. Yes. It's very nice, very subtle. Uh, highly recommended. Highly recommended. How many um, how many red weddings on a scale from one to five? Oh, this is. I mean, it's. I don't want to go out, you know, with a bang and give a five star to the first product we ever review, but it's a very very strong four. Mm -hmm. Four red weddings. Imagine. It's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> brutal man. So many just dead die wolves all over the place. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's a, that's a great tonic of the week. And uh, by that, I think uh, we're, um, we're getting to the end of the show. And um, let's summarize this. What do you guys think? Are you happy? Went okay. It's great. First time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the first time. Good beards. Good oil. Yeah. yeah. Some good cards. Well, good so art. Yeah, good yeah. art, at least. We don't care good about art. the cards. Yeah, good art. So, um, do we yeah. want to get in touch with people, or we just want to spend the next week stroking our beards? Oh, I would like to get some feedback on this. Um, at least, if you, uh, if you guys, that uh, the two of you that probably listened to this episode, um, what are your, uh, what are your favorite beards from second edition? First edition. What are your favorite products? Yeah, we want to hear from you, and we want uh, feedback on the show, on the format. Uh, um, yeah, help us improve. Yeah. Um, and who would you like to be? Um, who would you like to hear as a guest on the cast? Right. Yeah, that would be awesome mm -hmm. to hear. So, um, thanks, guys. See you next Thank week. you, Jacob. See you, See you next, next week. week. I hope, maybe. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm hoping that I get to come back, but you know. Oh, you'll be back. You did a you, good job, Andreas. You, you did, did a good, good job. job. Yeah. So bad. that's good. So um, have a good uh, beard week and um, don't shave. Not even outlines. Oh, that's okay. Do your out but, do like, your outlines. Yeah. yeah. Do your outlines properly. Yeah. Yeah. Use your beard oil. 
Um, use a comb if you want. Yeah. Don't and, forget uh, to uh, don't forget to wax your tips. Don't forget to wax mm. your tips and um, tip your waitress. Wax your tips. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. See ya. You too.